Hi everybody and welcome to Kew. Now, if you think about Kew Gardens, then what you think about is something like this, which is the palm house. Behind that pile of Victorian glass, which is a marvel in itself, is the work that Kew really does. A lot of people know about Kew by being this fantastic garden in southwest London, but actually we are one of the world's leading organisations in plant and fungal science. It could be argued that Kew was set up to explore that relationship and the hundreds of millions of years of evolution and that evolutionary struggle has created in plants a storehouse of solutions. There is a branch of science called biophotovoltaics. It's a relatively new discipline that comes out of fuel cell research. The basic idea is the conversion of light energy into electrical energy using photosynthesis is possible. Incoming light into the plant is used to split water molecules. And the generated protons and electrons can be harvested using a bioelectrical chemical system, much in the same way as a solar cell. A battery generates electricity using chemical energy. In a battery, one of the electrodes, the anode, undergoes an oxidation reaction. This is a chemical process that gives off electrons. The electrons are made to travel to the other electrode, the cathode, and here the electrons undergo a reduction reaction. That's the chemical process where the electrons are absorbed back in. Now, to make a battery work, we force those electrons to move through a wire on the outside of the battery, and while they do that, they can do work like powering a light bulb. Now, just like in an ordinary battery, a microbial fuel cell uses chemical energy to generate electricity. A microbial fuel cell has two electrodes held in separate chambers. The anode chamber that contains the bacteria is anaerobic. That means it doesn't have oxygen. The cathode chamber is aerobic, and that means it does have oxygen. The oxidation process occurs inside the bacteria living in the anode chamber and takes advantage of the oxidation that bacteria carry out naturally during cellular respiration. Electron bonds hold together the molecules in the food that the bacteria eats. The bacteria break those bonds and release the electrons. This activity of cellular respiration can continue for as long as the bacteria have food. And bacteria can digest pretty much anything. And they can digest human waste and other waste products such as ammonia, ethanol, acetate. And of course that makes microbial fuel cell technology very, very attractive to get rid of waste and generate electricity at the same time. Bacteria used in microbial fuel cells are called exoelectrogens. They're electrochemically active and can transfer electrons outside of their cells. The electrons they give off reach the anode in one of three ways. They can be transported by protein carriers, they can be exported through the cell membrane, or they can be secreted in chemical solutions known as mediators. Of course, in a sense, this is a solar cell, with the added advantage if it cleans itself, it repairs itself, and if it goes really, really well, it increases itself. So it's no real surprise that the next step in fuel cells is to use that process of photosynthesis. The photosynthesis allows the plant to grow, it gives out waste products, and it's actually the microorganisms at the roots of the plants that are responsible for the production of electricity in the same way as a microbial fuel cell. Now, as they produce the electrons and the electricity, of course, carbon dioxide is produced, but then and the plants are using up the carbon dioxide, which makes the whole thing net neutral. But essentially, it is a microbial fuel cell, but using photosynthesis. Hence the term biophotoelectric. So just like in the animal world, where we watch tigers, in the plant world, we're attracted to, well, the large and the impressive. But in terms of energy, in terms of biomimicry, sometimes, the smallest things are the most interesting, like lichens and mosses and algaes, like on that rock face. It doesn't matter which plant is being used, it's essentially the same process, and walls of mosses have been built, and they've put together a table of how much moss would be needed to generate how much power, and small-scale devices have been built, like a coffee table and a clock, to demonstrate the principles. When we think of the natural environment, what we tend to 
think about is nature red in tooth and claw, and there's two main reasons for that. One of them is documentaries which show lions and hyenas chasing down gazelles, and the other one is the time frame at which we live. We live too quickly. If we lived a little bit more slowly, we would see that in the world of plants, nature is green in thorn and leaf. If you watch time lapse of plant roots growing, you'll see that they behave more like animals. So plants are far more exciting than we might think at first sight, and in so many ways. Of course, it is all in its very early days, but it does open up exciting possibilities of how we might interact with our world and yet solve our problems at the same time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.